everybody and welcome back to Zara together. I have been quite busy as you can see. I have built up a lot of terrain around this place in the middle that we built last time. The little pavilion where we can get in and out of the base. So basically these cliffs are surrounding the entire structure. We have some waterfalls and then here we have a place where the water down there will be flowing out. So a further, what would you call this? Like a crevasse between these rock structures and the same thing over here we have another exit there so over here and currently i've just bridged this with some scaffolding and then we have these cute bridges here that connect everything and i'm sure we're going to build a lot more of those since we have all these water features not just the big crevasse, but also these where we will need to get over eventually once we extend this out. And down there we have a little bit of an Isengard situation going on, as you can see. And you might be wondering, why am I terraforming down there if I'm going to build up the entire terrain anyway? And the answer is, first, I'm not really terraforming down there, it's more of just like material gathering. I need a ton of materials to build everything up here, especially since I like to double build, by which I mean uh, I like to have like one base layer and then build on top of that because it just it makes everything so much easier if I don't have to do like texturing like with this pathway, like hovering over nothing. Luckily, I remembered that we have these mulch blocks in the Zava mod and you can get 16 of these blocks out of four planks and five dirt blocks, if I remember correctly. So at least with all the dirt that I'm collecting down there, I can make tons of mulch. And the second reason for the terraforming down there is, well, it just, it, it helps me imagine what I want to build if there's less distraction down there. So <laughs> I guess you could say I am doing a bit of terraforming too, but a lot of it is, as I said, just resource gathering. And speaking of resource gathering, while decorating all this, I already used up a lot of the plants that I had collected so far. So I'm definitely going to need to go on an adventure soon where I will collect more of those plants. Like the Arctic moss, I like it so much that I'm putting it basically everywhere, which means that I need a ton of the stuff. And this only grows in cold biomes. And then we have the winter succulent, which is also from colder biomes. And I've been really liking this one because I feel it kind of ties things a little bit together. So remember when I was talking about this mossy cobblestone from the chisel mod and that it has kind of a different color than the normal cobbles mossy cobblestone or mossy stone and that this one matches the color that we have in this biome, whereas this one is pretty different. And so the winter succulent and also this flower a little bit, they have more of that bluish green tone, which I feel helps those blocks integrate into the environment much more. And the same thing with those fir leaves that I used for some of the plants on the cliff sides. I also replaced the ones that I made in the last episode where I used the orchard leaves, which were kind of the same color as the biome here. And just use the fir leaves instead because I feel like this it just ties everything together a little bit better. So last time I asked if we should give our sheep a name too and actually I got two really great suggestions which can only mean one thing we need another sheep and I know that there's one hanging around here somewhere. There you are Come with me. Okay, there we go. So the first name is Princess Peach, which was recommended by Genie Genie. Thank you very much for that. And the other one is Piggy, which was recommended by JC Back. And of course, both of these names are kind of based on the sheep color being pink. So as a last touch, there we go. So by the way, this is what it looks from down here currently. I am definitely not going to fill up everything with blocks. That would be ridiculous. And you can see I do have a door here that lets me get in. 
so that I can use this entrance down here. And those window doors uh, actually fit in really well. Like you, you almost can't see them, although for some reason, sometimes when I do see them out of the corner of my eye, it makes me think that there's a creeper standing there. I don't know if it's like the the rectangular shape and the, the, the different tones of green, but sometimes these doors really, really scare me. <laughs> so this has happened more than once. So you can see up here, I have added some of those bolder shapes that I have been talking about. And we're definitely going to add some more, even in the more flat bits that I think we're going to have. And I added this path here already. And then I just kind of need to figure out where else I want this to go. But I think here is the perfect place for us to do our first exhibit. So this is a big step for our zoo. And <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. So the question is, what kind of animal are we going to put here? So I want to start with something not too ambitious. Let's start slow and see how it goes, because I think there's a lot about like the general block palette for the exhibits. Like, I don't even know how, how I want to do like the fence and everything <laughs> that we still need to figure out. And also, I don't have that many animals yet. So our choices are kind of limited, but let's go into our base and have a look. So let's see, I have one opossum, no koala. I do actually have a few kangaroos, no elephants. Anyway, what I do have is I do have a few guinea pigs because Orr bred a lot of those and gave them away. And I do have two capybaras, which is not quite enough for an exhibit. I would love to have a few more of those, but we do have a female and the male, so maybe we could breed them. But anyway, what this is making me think is that we could start either with like a rodent theme or with a South American theme, because both of these are rodents from South America, which is also why I kind of grouped them together in this chest. So I also have two rats, which would fit with the rodent theme, and those are very easy to breed. And maybe I could find some rabbits, like vanilla rabbits. Those aren't actually technically rodents, which I was very surprised to learn, but they are closely related to rodents at least. So still fitting the theme, I guess. Anyway, today I want to start with the guinea pigs. We have five, so that is great. I think that's a nice amount of guinea pigs. And maybe we will eventually get more from Orr, but I think we can build a nice small exhibit for those. Just do something easy to start with. So in the beginning, I came up with these three color schemes and the big one in the middle with the normal stone color range is reserved for like the terrain only. So I can't use that for the exhibits except for the parts of the exhibits that consist out of like natural stone. And we're going to have those two, of course. And now I have these two others and I think the black is too dark for me. So I'm considering using the white to make the non-terrain parts of the exhibit out of, like the ones that are actually like man-made, I guess, in their materials. This would kind of also go with the paths that we have because they are a bit brighter colored. And then on top, I like these fences. I like them a lot, uh, the look of it, but the issue with those is that you can just jump over them and animals can do the same. So we can't use just these to keep the animals in. And what I've seen other people do, like Gran and Grimer, is that they kind of put the animals into a hole. So they have like a bit of a wall that they can't get up and then the fences on top are just to make sure that nobody falls in. And then you can stand here and kind of look down on the animals. And I think that's uh, not a bad idea. So I want to create an outline of the exhibit that I'm going to build. We can extend it this way and then I need to dig out what we have here in the middle because that needs to be lowered down. So I'm looking at this and I keep thinking that this is going to be way too bright. I don't really like it. 
but I did spot the dacite bricks right next to it and I'm wondering if maybe I could replace those in the path with something else and then we have those blocks free to use for the enclosures. The reason I'm trying to avoid to use like exactly the same color for two different things like the pathing and the enclosures is just that in my experience this muddies things up a lot and makes it harder to tell what is what especially from a distance and having those things in different colors just gives more structure to the environment. So I have actually been wondering what gravel would look like in the path and yeah I think this is a really good option. It makes it look a little bit rougher than it did before, a little less clean, but I think it fits really well. The color is quite similar to those uh, Zava mixed stone blocks and it makes the path a little bit darker, which means that we can use the lighter dacite color for the enclosure. Oops. Yes, yeah, so see, this is why I do the double building. It makes things like this a lot easier. I wouldn't even be able to place the gravel uh, directly in the air. But there are some places where for some reason or other I don't have a block underneath. And I sometimes forget that, and then this happens. Does anyone know a way how I can prevent my portal from spawning these zombie pigmen? Because that is really annoying and I hate that sound. Stop it. Oh, why didn't you die? There we go. Don't you point that thing at my sheep? How dare you? Yeah, I'm just gonna ignore those guys and hope they go away. Usually they do eventually. But you leave my sheep alone. Leave them alone. Actually, I may have to... Oh, that's dangerous though. I don't want to hit my sheep. Take that. That's much better. I think the other ones all despawned. See, Gren, that's how you take care of that. Okay, so see those two circles? The Dacite one is the outline for the guinea pig exhibit and the stone one is the outline of a particularly big boulder that is going to reach into multiple exhibits from here. So I think I want to have one like right adjacent to this and one in the back. Somehow I will figure this out eventually, the exact layout. For now I think this is fine. And I want the boulder to kind of be part of the exhibit so there's probably going to be a little bit of an overhang or a cave here so that the uh, animals can kind of sit underneath that or go inside. I will figure out how to do that exactly too, probably much sooner than the rest of the layout. But first what I need to do is I need to extend the terrain around here, the one that's up here, and then I need to dig this out and create the base for the exhibit part. So get the mold ready and let's go. we have the canvas that we can build the exhibit on. I completed the basic shape of the boulder back there but I want to modify it now. So first I built the boulder the way I thought the shape would have been originally and now I want to dig 
out some blocks here and create a little bit of a cavern or cave. So I'm just gonna try placing a few blocks and see what it looks like. I think that's not too bad to get a good shape here since we don't have a lot of blocks to create like a, a pleasing curve to the rock. Maybe I should employ some stairs and slabs. Yeah, because this now looks very symmetrical, that's no good. We definitely need a little bit more asymmetry in here. Also, I completely forgot that we're going to have a layer of ground, of course, so I'm going to have to raise this <laughs> up another block at least. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, that's much better, I think. Uh, but again, I forgot that the floor is raised up a little bit more. I guess I need to do the floor first and then I'm going to have to revisit this. So I have prepared this cactus backpack for me with some possible ground blocks. I think guinea pigs originally come from like the foresty jungly regions of South America. And so I want to go for a very foresty feel, very humid too. So I'm going for like the darker colors. Some normal coarse dirt we can add too. And then of course the rest is going to be lush green grass. But especially in the cavern, we're going to have less grass and more of the other ground blocks. That's enough, I think. We don't have that much space for some elaborate texturing. And I think I also want to make some of these into path blocks, especially the ones here in the back of the cavern. Yeah, I like that. I'm not going to add a water feature in here because I think on, in this small an exhibit we don't really need it. And I am worried that my <laughs> little guinea pigs will drown. That's quite nice, I think. I like that. Now I'm gonna have to take another look at this cave. Okay, that's good, I think. It's not super big, but I mean, guinea pigs are very small. And in there they have at least like a little bit of shelter from the rain. They can hang out in there and I think that's great. Now, of course, I need to texture the rest of the stone as well with like the usual blocks that we use for this. I like putting some of the dark green mossy stone down there because I feel like it looks like there's uh, moss starting to grow in it from the bottom. Then the top I think I'm going to texture that uh, once I'm done with the other exhibits that are going to be around this boulder because I probably need to change things anyway. And if I start putting overgrown stone on there now, everything is going to overgrow and it will just be a huge mess. Where did you come from? I just heard this bee coming out of... There's a beehive up in that tree. <laughs> is that a... A new development? Because I didn't notice that when I placed the, the glowing leaf blocks. That's interesting. I thought this tree had stopped growing by now, which is also why I placed like those branches to look a bit like roots. Oh, I'm gonna have to decide whether I want to leave you there or not. I mean, you might kill yourself on all the water, but otherwise I don't really mind bees being here, I guess. So this place is almost ready for the guinea pigs to move in. We just need to do a little bit of decorating. I have textured the outer walls and I have added some light sources underneath the carpet so that no baddies spawn in here. And now I think I want to have a tree in this exhibit. I don't want it to get too big and I'm going to use a dynamic trees one because they are not as like big and white as we know. 
And if you remember what I said at one point is that they kind of need like a big square of dirt around them to grow big. So I'm hoping that since we have these other blocks in here, that is going to prevent the tree from growing too big. So let's try. Okay, let's see how big this gets. Uh huh. I think the size is kind of cool. I would want to get rid of the leaves that are down here. Ah, it did it automatically. Okay. Now the question is, can I stop it from getting any bigger? And how big is it even going to get? I made myself these potions from the Dynamic Trees mod. And I would hope that this would prevent the tree from growing any bigger. Because actually, I think right now that is quite good. I would even take away a few more leaves. But let's see. Okay, this should have done it, I think. Now I'm going to just trim off a few of the leaves, the ones over here as well. I don't want it to grow too close to the rock. Yeah, I think that's good. It gives some shade to the animals, but it doesn't prevent us from looking into the exhibit. But it looks like it is continuing to grow a little bit. I'm not sure why it's doing that since we used the potion of depletion. But I do remember from my zoo in Minecraft 1.12 that the dynamic trees can be kind of temperamental. And the potions don't always work the way you think they would. But they have changed the way the potions work so I can't exactly use my old tricks here. Let's just keep an eye on this tree and focus on the decoration down here. I would like to add some rotting logs here because I think the guinea pigs would very much love to hang out in these. And I've also read that they like to make little trails underneath bushes, so I'm also adding some bushes in here as well. That's good. Now for the ground, I don't want to use exactly the same stuff that I'm using out there. So I brought some of this wilted grass, which I think is going to look cool. Let's see. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a different color than the grass blocks, so I think that's nice. And I do want a few flowers, but I don't want anything too loud, if you understand what I mean. So I think these flowers could work very well. They are kind of small, but they add just the tiniest pop of color in here. Then I also have some of the Johnson grass. And I think this is going to fit in here and gives it a little bit more of a wild appearance. But I think most of it I'm just going to plant next to the wall so that it doesn't stick out too much. And finally I have my usual ferns and short grass that I'm going to cover everything else up with. I think we can even have a little bit here in the cavern. Like some ferns for example. Perfect. I think this looks really nice and I think the guinea pigs are going to love hanging out in here. So let's not wait any longer and just put them in. I've prepared some name tags here that just say Tinokins on it. And I don't know exactly if we need that on the server, on the Omega server animals despawned if you didn't name tag them, but I don't think this is actually an issue on this server. But still to be safe, let's do it. But I'm going to need your guys' help to name those guinea pigs. So if you have any great ideas for a name, put it in the comments and maybe I will name a guinea pig after your suggestion in the next episode. Okay, let's go. <gasps> it's so tiny. I think it's a baby guinea pig. Oh, that is so cute. Let me give you a name. And how is your health? Seven of eight health. That's... Excuse me, sir, um, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Could you maybe not? Oh dear, okay, where did the guinea pig go? Hello, little guy or little girl, I didn't actually look. There you are. You're a little boy guinea pig. Actually, I think I need to do something about the situation. Okay, little guinea pig, nothing happened in here. Did you see anything happen? Nothing happened in here. Let's get you some friends. Where did it go? It jumped up. Is it in the tree? 
Oh, these animals are so troublesome, I tell you. I'm not sure where it went. Is it you? Yes, it's you. Okay. Oh, look, they are getting to know each other. You'd love to see it. Okay, we have three more. <laughs> Can you not jump like that? It's kind of scaring me. Maybe I should let them out over here somewhere. Maybe that helps. Yeah, that's better. And the last one. We have five little babies. Look at that. I guess Or just scoops them up as soon as they are born. Which leaves us with five babies in here. But I'm sure they're going to be grown by the time I start the next episode. So enjoy the little babies while they last. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to need your help naming them. And I hope they like it in here and there's nothing that can hurt them. I really tried to be careful when designing this enclosure. And actually, I found out at the last minute that path blocks can actually hurt them because for some reason, animals with very small hitboxes can take damage from blocks that are not quite a whole block for some reason. So that's why we don't have any path blocks in here anymore. And now I hope that they are going to be okay. Anyway, that is it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Consider leaving a like if you did. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.